Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be going over how to make a GUI open when a part is touched. So for starters, as per every single other video, you want to make sure your Explorer and properties are enabled. If your Explorer and properties are not enabled, head up to the top bar here, click on view, and then enable Explorer and properties, and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Now that you've enabled your export and properties, you now want to go and make the area which the player is actually going to be touching, or actually go and make the part that the player is going to be touching. So, we're going to be needing two parts. Now, depending on how you want your part shaped and all of this, you can change that accordingly. We're just going to be keeping it very simple. So, this is going to be now our first part is really going to be the actual what is representing the area. So, let's say you had maybe a, a shop area. And let's say this was outlined with a bit of a neon kind of look. Or this is your pad that is going to open up your GUI. This is just for show. This right here is not going to be doing anything. It's going to be up to our touch part, which is then going to trigger the code. So this right here, this is just for decoration. And this is just for the representation of the area that is actually going to open the GUI. So we can go and change this to a color, just to maybe a blue. And this is just for show. This is not actually going to do anything. So we can leave this at part, but you can also go and change this to any other name you would like. Um, but this is just gonna be for show. And then now obviously we want to go and insert another part by going up here, click on the part and inserting another part. Now keep in mind, you can also use spheres, corner wedge, wedge, whatever you really want, even meshes. But uh, cylinders tend to be the most common because some people quite like to have the kind of circle shaped little uh, areas where people run into and then they can then go and purchase or uh, get the GUI on their screen. Um, that's that's the most common, but we're just going to keep it very simple with the, the, part, uh, the normal blocks here. So this is now going to be our touch part. So how this is going to work is when this part here is touched, then the GUI is going to open onto the player's screen. Now, we can go and just make this like this and we kind of want to make it a little high. So if a player has to, for example, jump into this area over here, it'll still register where if we just have it down here, it may not necessarily register. It will, but this one out here, by the time they've e even started jumping in here, it's already prompted it and put the GUI on their screen. So this is going to be our main part here that is actually going to trigger that that script to, to actually function correctly. So. For starters, you can go and customize this. You can really change it to whatever you want. Ideally, what we're actually wanting is to make it transparent so that it doesn't actually look like there's anything there and this is just being our touch part. We then want to also go and turn off can collide, basically meaning that the players can collide with it, basically meaning that they can walk through it in a, in a sense. It's basically not there when you actually go and play the game. You wouldn't even know it's there. All you would see is your bottom decoration part here. So now we want to go and change the name of our touch part and I'm just going to name this touch part just like this because this is going to be our touch part that the player has to touch to be able to get access to that GUI. So now please do keep in mind you can also use uh, cylinders. This is most often used with cylinders but we're just going to keep it as a square but it works the exact same with any other shape you have. So we've got our touch part, we've got our main decoration part here now. Now we want to actually go and create our GUI which is going to be shown on screen when a player enters this area. So, well, when a player touches this part. So we want to head over to our starter GUI, click on the plus button, and insert a screen GUI. Click on the plus button next to your screen GUI and insert a frame. Now, it really depends on what, you're, what sort of GUI you're wanting here. I'm just going to keep it very basic with just a you know, standard plain GUI with a bit of text on it. It doesn't really matter what too much is on there, but obviously you can adjust this GUI accordingly if this is going to be your Game Pass shop. Then you'd have your Game Pass shop here and your Game Pass GUI right over here. So we're just going to leave it here that like that for now. Um, we do not need to change any of the names simply because we're kind of doing a script.parent sort of situation. Um, but we are also going to want to now go and create a X button, which is actually going to remove the, the GUI from the player's screen if they go and click on the X button once they've gone and once they've gone and walked onto onto this area here and they've pr um, triggered of that touch part. GUI opens and let's say they wanted to leave, we now need to have an X button. So click on the plus button next to our frame and insert a text button or an image button, it's up to you. I'm just gonna be using a text button because it's nice and simple and easy. Just add, change the text to X, text scale like that. And then we can also change, we'll just leave it like that. That actually, that, that, that's perfect, perfect. We don't need to change anything after that. So there's our X button there. We will get to the X button here in a second, but we first wanna go and actually make the system where if a player touches 
our touchpad over here, then this GUI is going to open up and then we will get over to our text button. So to click on the plus button next to your frame and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of your frame, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. So thankfully there isn't much we actually need to change in the script, the only thing we need to change is here on line 1 where it says part. Now depending on whatever your touch part is called will depend on what this is named. So if you guys remember, our touch part which is our invisible part is called touch part. So we would go and change part to touch part. So here on line one, we basically identify our, what our touch part is. It goes to the game, to the workspace. It's basically like a shortcut, also known as a variable. Local touch part equals game dot workspace. Wait for child because we're waiting for that child to be there, which is touch part. So it waits for the child to be there before it then goes and finds touch part. So game dot workspace, wait for child touch part. Then it goes local GUI equals script dot parent, basically meaning our GUI is from the script to the parent. So that is our main GUI, which is our frame which is holding everything else, text, etc. It then goes touch part dot touch. So when the touch part, when our touch part is touched, it then creates a function. So basically here on line four, it goes if touch dot parent find first child humanoid and touch dot parent equal equals game dot players dot local player dot character, then it will make the GUI visible. It will go GUI dot visible equals true, basically meaning that the GUI is visible. So here on line four, just to explain it slightly more, it goes if touch dot parent, so our touch, the touch from the function, dot the parent of that touch, find first child is humanoid, and touch dot parent equals equals game dot players dot local player dot character, then basically meaning if they have the humanoid and if they are a character, then the GUI dot visible equals true, basically meaning nothing else is going to trigger the event or trigger the function unless it holds a humanoid and is a character because if it doesn't have any of those then it's not going to open the GUI because let's say you had a normal system you could maybe go and put a I don't know a, another part on it and then it would trigger the event this is basically blocking out any of that so that it only does it when there is a humanoid and a character detected so then if a, a, a humanoid and a character is detected, then the GUI dot visible equals true, basically meaning that the GUI is now visible. It then prints something in the output, and we went over the output on a previous video. Uh, it, go it then prints GUI dot open, and basically that will print it right here where it says, um, so we'll print GUI open. So when we go and run the game, and then the GUI is opened, it's gonna tell us that the GUI has opened, and basically assuring us that the code has run correctly. This is not necessary. If you don't want that in your output, you can just go and delete it and, you know, job done. But we'll just leave it in there simply because then you can have a little bit of a play around in your output. And keep in mind, you can also go and change this. But the main thing that we are changing is our touch part. So now that you've gone and finished off this code and we've gone through it, you want to click on the, click on the X button up here next to your local script. And now we want to actually go and make our close button, which is actually going to close the GUI once we're finished with it and it's been opened. So we want to head over to our text button, which is holding our X button. Keep in mind, you can also use an image button, really whatever you really want. So text button, click on the plus button, insert a local script. So now that you've gone and inserted another local script inside of your text button, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now this code is basically going to be making our GUI false when we are ready to close the GUI and when this button is clicked. So over here it goes script.parent.mouse button one click, it then creates a function, basically going to the script to the parent, then once that has received a mouse button one click, it will then create a function which will then go script.parent.parent.visible equals false, which basically goes from our script local script here, script.parent dot the parent, and then that will make it the visibility false, basically meaning this right now is currently true, basically meaning it's showing, but then it will go and make it false so that our GUI is no longer showing. So that is false, true, false, true. So now that we've gone in and inserted the script inside of the local script inside of our text button, we want to head up here, click on the X button next to our local script. And now just before we go test out the game, you want to go and make sure that both of your parts are anchored. But once you've gone and anchored your parts, click on the play button up here to go test it out. So as you guys can see, we are now in the base plate. Now please excuse my avatar, I was in the process of doing a thumbnail 
and I was needing this avatar. But I went to go and try change it now, but Roblox's avatar thing seems to have bugged out and, it, and isn't letting me change back. So this will have to do the job for now. Um, so as you guys can see, here's our decoration pad that we made earlier. If we go walk on the part now, our GUI will open. Keep in mind, my GUI was made blank. Obviously, whatever you put in your GUI is completely up to you. And then now let's say, oh, right, okay, I'm finished, I'm all done now. Click on the X button up here, and now our GUI is closed, and then we can go roam around and continue playing the game. Just to test that one last time, walk on the GUI, GUI is opened, click on the X button to go close the GUI, and then we can walk off. Easy as that. If you guys are a little bit lost, you don't really know what you're doing, and you're needing a little bit of assistance, please feel free to contact us on Discord and create a ticket in my Discord server, and we can happily help you out. But in a way guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you guys did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell so you never miss another one of these uploads. And also, if you really did enjoy, please make sure to consider liking the video. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.